Sarah. Good morning. All right. So it is Monday morning. And today I'm excited because I want to talk to you um, about this book that I found, I don't know, several years ago, The Four Agreements. Has anyone read this book? Is this new to you? Okay, so this is um, The Four Agreements and it's written by Don Miguel Ruiz. And uh, Don uh, Miguel Ruiz or Miguel uh, is uh, a brilliant writer and what I would call a spiritual teacher. And so this book uh, is probably introduced to me around eight years ago. And you can see it's small, it's easy to read. Uh, so I highly recommend it. And I'm glad that we're going to talk about it this morning because the book talks about four agreements that you should really make with yourself in order to live a high level, fulfilling, spiritual, successful uh, life that is, is really focused on achievement, right? And achievement in all areas, not just achievement in, in your professional career, right? This is about living your best life. And um, I think that this is something for everyone in this book. Um, and I'm going to try to give you a really practical summary of it in the next 20 minutes or so. So you might want to take some notes. And uh, of course, if you have questions, as always, just use the chat or, or jump on um, and let me know. So one of the things that um, Miguel talks about in this book that I also found very fascinating is the fact that we're all domesticated. So what does that mean? It means that we're born as a wild spirit, we're born in a very natural state, right? We enter the world, think about babies and young, and young children, they enter the world and isn't it true that, you know, they have very few inhibitions, right? They're, they're just inquisitive and they're curious and they're always seeking out experiences and information. They wanna to touch things, they wanna ask questions, right? And then somewhere along the way, we became domesticated. And what that means is that we became a product of our environment and we became uh, creatures who were uh, maybe even afraid to ask a lot of questions or felt very self-conscious, right? And so our behavior started to change as we were under the influence of people, experiences in our environment. And I just thought that that was so interesting because that means that we become uh, I guess, influenced by social norms, right? So who can relate to that? Who can relate to, to this concept of feeling, maybe never called it domesticated before, right? But just understanding that you might be um, prohibiting yourself or you might feel inhibited by always speaking your mind or asking certain questions or living your life in a way that feels completely comfortable for you because it might not be so accepted. Right. So I, that's one of the points that he makes in this book. Um, and so he talks about some things to rebel against domestication. And it doesn't mean to to, you know, be someone who's not responsible or who's not, uh, you know, following standards or structures or rules or anything like that. But how do you balance your existence in a world that expects <laughs> that and still be that person who can really be independent and free spirited and not be afraid to show the world your authentic self, right? Not feel like you have to apologize for it uh, or explain it and uh, really use your natural abilities as an opportunity and, and as a tool to move yourself forward. So I thought that was really, really interesting. Um, something else he talks a lot about in this book which we've talked about here on Mojo before is awareness. So if you're taking notes, I would say awareness is a gift and it's up to you to use it, right? Because once you become aware of something, you can't really unknow it, yet you could choose to ignore it. And so awareness is a huge opportunity for our own personal growth. And I think that with awareness, comes an opportunity to do one of, well, I think both things sometimes, right? But at least one of two things, forgiveness and growth, right? So when you become aware of either what someone else is doing or what you are perhaps doing or how you're lending to a certain outcome in a situation, the first thing that you can choose to do is just say, okay, I accept it. 
I, I forgive that and I'm going to move on and, and make some some choices, right, and take some learning or lessons from this and, and go forward in a different way. So um, he talks about awareness and he talks about forgiveness in the book a lot. And then the other thing he talks about, and then we'll go into what the four agreements actually are. Uh, the other thing that Miguel goes into um, in the book a lot is action, right? And again, we talk about that here on Mojo because without action, we can't get results, right? We can't just think our way into whatever successful outcome we want. It's certainly the most important part and the first part of it, but in order to really start to see different results, we have to take action. So we have to be in the doing. We have to be in movement. Um, it's great to have a positive outlook, uh, which, you know, I've worked hard over the years to really, you know, maintain and choose to see things from a different perspective. Yet, if I don't take action, most things won't change, right? I can, I can be a positive person, but staying in the same place. I want to be a positive person. I want to be an actionable person because I want to move my life forward. I want to see those results. I want to take the opportunity to uh, get into movement so that I can see things start changing. And through the action is where we learn our biggest lessons, right? Because unless you're doing, you're not really learning. Yet. And if you're not doing, you're not failing either. And failing is an opportunity to learn. So action is really important. So any thoughts or questions so far? I love that we have a good group on Zoom today so you guys can talk to me. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about the, the four agreements themselves, right? So uh, this would be important for you to write down. So Miguel says that these are four agreements that we should make with ourselves so that we can bring more joy into our life and that we can end the needless suffering we inflict on ourselves. I'll let that sit for a minute. I know it's early. <laughs> But we can end the needless suffering we often inflict on ourselves, right? And so this is uh, an opportunity to make a promise with yourself. Maybe you could consider it uh, an act or a code of conduct for yourself. If these four agreements resonate with you, uh, as they did with me several years ago, and I would say this was really one of the moments where things really started to change for me was, was reading this book. Um, it's a very, pro it's a simple book, as I said, in a short book, but I would call it provocative. I meant to say that earlier. I wrote that in my notes, right? Provocative. What does that mean? It, it's a thought starter. That's what the word provocative really means. It's, it's creating thought. Uh, and so I love that. So it is full of wisdom in this book. All right. So the four agreements. Number one, be impeccable with your word. Be impeccable with your word. So the actual definition of impeccable is without sin. What I believe uh, and what Miguel does really explain more in the book, and I, I've actually read several blogs, you know, of, of people who are doing what I'm doing, just kind of breaking down the book for you. And I think that um, what he really is talking about here is to only say what you mean. Say only what you mean. This is so important, guys, right? Because how often do we find ourselves yesing someone, agreeing to something, um, convincing ourselves? Uh, and at the end of the day, if we are not saying only what we mean to ourselves and other people, can we really be a person of integrity? Because you have to be in, in integrity with yourself, right? And so what I love about uh, this first rule is that it's, it's really, if we commit to this practice of being impeccable with your word, then it means that we are committing to really thinking before we act, right? And to really be clear about what is right for us, what is in alignment with us. And it's to trust that we can really stand in that truth, right? So be impeccable with your word. It means it encourages you to get real. It encourages you to stop lying to yourself, to others, even the little white lies, right? 
just we're, I'm not talking about someone who's got a real you know problem with the truth. I'm talking about even the little white lies that we make you know or say to ourselves and other people all day long, right? So I think when you get into this mindset of being impeccable with your word and creating that that filter, I I, I would say that we raise our level of awareness. We can raise our level of joy within the day. And I think that being happy first is what brings success, right? A lot of people are waiting for that success to show up so they can be happy. I have to tell you, friends, that's not the way it works. You have to find your inner peace. You have to find your happiness. Success will start coming to you in all kinds of directions, okay? So that is the first agreement is to be impeccable with your word. Uh, the, and this is from the book, the energy of our words matter. The energy of our words matter. And that's something I learned. Uh, I, I, I want to say, believe it or not, the first time I ever heard that before was Maya Angelou being interviewed by Oprah Winfrey. And Maya Angelou has talked about this many times in her um, teachings. And she said, you know, words, words, are, they're sticky they can stick to things. They can stick to you. They can stick to surfaces in your home. She shared a story. I heard it more than once where she had a dinner party, a cocktail party or some, something in her home. And there was someone there that she cared about. She invited them to her house, as she put it, and they were uh, making inappropriate jokes, like, you know, socially inappropriate jokes. And she asked that person to leave. She said, you can't speak that way in my home. I won't have that stuff in my house. I won't have it stuck to my walls. Uh, and so I thought that was pretty, pretty, um, you know, provocative and pretty uh, strong in her commitments and her uh, integrity. So just remember that the words you use matter. And who do you speak to most in a day? Yourself. Yourself. So what you say to yourself is so important. So number one agreement, be impeccable with your word. Number two, oh boy, here we go. Number two, don't take anything personally. Don't take anything personally. I had to do a lot of work in this area. I'm a people pleaser. I am a victim of, or no, I'm a survivor. Oh, I can't believe I said that. I'm a survivor of domestic violence. Uh, so I had a lot of things, right? Said to me, done to me, you know, so I had to really do some work on this one. And I think I've, I've, I can't say I've arrived. I don't know if we've ever arrived, but I certainly am so much further ahead than I was. So the second agreement is not to take anything personally. Um, Dr. Wayne Dyer uh, is famous for saying he, he was also uh, an author and a speaker, spiritual coach. Uh, what other people think of you is none of your business. What other people think of you is none of your business. Don't take anything personally. So what we have to understand about this is that when we start to assume that what is happening around us is about us, two things happen. We lose clarity of the situation because we go inward, right? So now we lose clarity of what is happening and how we might be able to support or help or, you know, create opportunities through our contributions, right? Because now we're thinking it's all about us. So, so we're all inside ourselves and we get stuck in all this thinking, right? And then we start to make, which is going to be coming up as another agreement, assumptions. And, uh, and usually we're wrong at the end of the day, <laughs> when we start taking things personally, we're usually we're wrong. And so we have to look at this agreement uh, as a freedom movement, right? When you stop taking things personally, you start to become freer. So the other person, whatever they're going through, whatever they're saying or doing, whatever that situation is, I guarantee you 99% of the time it has absolutely nothing to do with you. So uh, many of you know, some of you are with Keller Williams, right? Part of our culture is to seek first to understand. If you can also adopt that, so write that down, seek first to understand. If you can adopt that mindset, that will really do 
a lot to help you from taking things personally, right? Because we have to stand in this, this place of curiosity. We have to stand in this place of objectivity so that we don't go inward. We don't assume it's about us and we can really assess the situation say, what's going on here? What's going on here, right? Because maybe you you could be of help to that other person, right? So I see this sometimes in the workplace, right? Two people are just not on the same page and when one or both start taking things personally. And then that little issue becomes a personal problem and it affects the way everyone is, is uh, working together. And uh, it really, it's such a distraction and a waste of time and it depletes you of your energy. And at the end of the day, my friends, it takes away your personal power right so the second agreement don't take anything personally uh, because that will also allow you to keep your heart open i think when we take things personally we start to put a wall up right because we're we're assuming people are out to hurt us or get us and so that keeps us a little bit distant and i think that when you don't take things personally you're much more open to conversations and asking questions and being coming from that heart space rather than always up here. Good stuff. Yeah. All right, the third agreement. The third agreement is don't make assumptions as I tipped you off. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, it would be seek. Seek first to understand, thanks Aaron. Which means I'll, I'll actually before you speak, think what's happening here. So try to understand it from the other person's perspective. Great. All right. The third agreement, don't make assumptions. Boy, this one's hard, right? However, if you could stay out of this thinking pattern, you also will stay in curiosity, right? And that is such a huge tool, curiosity, because when you're curious, you'll ask more questions, right? So you'll be seeking information. But when you make assumptions, you, you kind of dig a path for yourself, right? That you get stuck in. And so none of those other opportunities or possibilities become available to you because you're just stuck in this one way of thinking, which your assumption has created for you. So it, it's a, it's a really powerful agreement might be one of the harder ones for some of you. Uh, and I recognize that, but when we make assumptions, we basically are trying to convince ourselves of what's happening. When we make assumptions, we're predetermining the outcome. When we make assumptions, we are closing ourselves off from other options. Not a productive way of thinking, right? Not a healthy way of thinking. And I'm gonna say this, I believe when we make assumptions, we create all kinds of drama for ourselves. So if any of you are looking to live a more joy-filled life, with more personal power, right? I've used that term already. Uh, then we definitely have to look at this agreement because as soon as we make assumptions, you know, we're creating a lot of drama and we're probably creating a, a one way perception. And, you know, whatever you put out into the universe is what you tend to get back. So you have to ask yourself, how are those assumptions? creating my reality, right? They're shaping your reality. And if you're prone to thinking negatively, or if you're prone to thinking in terms of scarcity, then what kind of life are you designing for yourself? Because whatever you focus on will expand. So this is also such a huge, they all are, as you can start to see, right? These four agreements can open up an amazing life for you. Um, <laughs> So I think this chapter uh, really just, I think, drives home this whole sense of curiosity, asking questions, gaining clarity, right? Are you, so here's a good question for yourself, and maybe this is a journal prompt. Do I seek clarity in my relationships, conversations, and thinking? Take each one of those areas and journal on that a little bit. You know, how do I seek clarity? in my relationships, my situations, my thinking, my, my opportunities, right? Because I think that's huge. The fourth agreement this morning, always do your best. The fourth agreement is always do your best, right? And so this sounds like simple. 
it sounds like something that you've probably been told since you were a little kid, yet how often do you really think about that? And how often are you programming your thoughts and actions to be in alignment with giving your best in everything that you do? Or do you find yourself giving it 50%, giving it 80%? You know, it's funny, as a coach, I've had this conversation with people before. Um, you know, I was a little off my game yesterday. Uh, I'm a little behind my goals from, you know, where I was in the beginning of the month. But I'm going to tell you what, this week, I'm going to give it 110%. How do you give it 110%? You only have 100% to give right? So we have to really think about this. Every day that we show up at less than our best, you can't get the time back and you can't get the productivity back and you can't get any of those opportunities back. You can restart at any moment though, and decide that you're going to give it your best. So this also, I, I found this to be really profound because I think that it's interesting how we often assume one of the agreements that we're always giving our, our best, that we're always working at our, our biggest or 100% capacity. But I, I think that, you know, it's an opportunity for you to really look at how do you sharpen the saw, right? Or sharpen the tools in your tool belt. So, in other words, what's your personal growth plan so that you can learn the skills, open your mindset to new opportunities so that you can always be at your best? How do you also create, I don't like to use the word balance because I don't think it's, it's about balance because there's more than two things that we have to, you know, balance anytime. I think it's more about flow, right? So how do you create flow in your life where if you work hard, you're also doing things to recharge your battery, right? Because if you, because it could be that you're giving a hundred percent on most days, but you're not taking the time for yourself. You're not taking the time for your, for your health for your hydration, for good sleep, for meditation, exercise, whatever it is, right? And so you're giving 100%, 100% until you have no more to give. And then you wind up giving 50% for a while until you find ways to recharge your battery, right? So the mindfulness around how do I create flow in my life where I can work hard and also, you know, recharge my battery and also, you know, uh, find time for personal development, find time for care, self-care, right? So I think when we agree to always do our best, it will, I, I believe, reduce some frustration. And I do believe that it can also improve your, your well-being as well. So those are the four agreements, all right? Number one is to be impeccable with your word. Number two, don't take anything personally. Number three, uh, don't make assumptions. And number four, always do your best. Pretty simple, pretty simple. Yeah, maybe not the easiest for all of us to commit to. Uh, and it may take a plan, right? An action plan. Uh, and I just found that this book uh, really did a lot for me. And, um, you know, I celebrated a, a big birthday the other day and it's got, you know, it has me thinking about a lot of things in my life. And I picked up this book last week and, you know, it was just kind of revisiting some stuff. And I, I said, well, I have to share this with my mojo group. So I think, again, remember a couple of key points. Words are powerful. They can either, uh, and this is, this is right out of the Bible and paraphrasing, but it can speak life or your words can destroy. And so we have to look at, you know, these four agreements, not only for how we interact and behave out in the world, but more importantly, how we live with ourselves, how we love ourselves, support ourselves, and how we are able to, you know, call in more freedom, more happiness and joy in everything that we do. So we have a minute or two. I'd love to know if anyone has any questions, any ahas, what you took away from this morning before we go on to the rest of our day. And again, I thank you for joining me. This was really great to see you this morning. Hi, I'll say something. Hi, Diana. Hi, how are you? Um, I'm pretty sure I read this book. I definitely Diana, I can't hear you. Can you hear Diana? Hello. Yes. Oh, that's weird. I can't hear you, but if everyone can hear you, go ahead. <laughs> can you hear me now? I won't know what you're saying to me. <laughs> that is so weird. Okay. 
Well, all I said was I, audio. I believe I read this book. I know I had the book during a time when I was doing lots of reading. Hmm. Can everyone else hear me? Oh, okay. now I can hear you. Oh, okay. So all I was right, just going to say on the, my the, end. First, the first two agreements seem to contradict one another. You know, oh, if tell you me live, what you're thinking on that. Well, I think if you live by these agreements, if you speak mindfully and your words mean something, but then if you speak them to someone who's also following the agreements and they don't let things bother them and don't take it personally, you know, it, it could almost be a contradiction. However, I, I do agree with it. I think that it's, this was a very good, um, very good mojo. And I think that it's very important to speak what you mean, to, to be thick skinned in this business and not to take things personally. I think yeah. that it's, you know, super, super important. And also that um, what I, my aha is that I don't take time for myself. Like I've given it all for my business. I had a, had an issue with, with my marriage, which fell apart. I just lost a boyfriend of three and a half years because I didn't give him the time. So I do need to take some personal time, but I do give it all for my business. And I yeah. guess that balance, I do need to find it. Yeah, well, first, I appreciate uh, you sharing and a um, couple things I would say to you, Diana. Yes, you're, you have to ask yourself, right, why, what is your big why? And why do you work so hard? And why do you put so much into your business? And what do you want that business to do for you to create your version of a perfect life, right? Because if you're not creating goals and, and really, you know, bringing joy into your personal life, right, then you're not living a completely harmonious or balanced life. But so a perfect I, business, create a perfect business funds a perfect life. If you can say that what you're living is your version of a perfect life. I mean, if so, I'll, I'll, and we can talk more offline too, if you'd like, Diana. So here's something that, and I really, again, appreciate you because what you share helps other people. So on the Mojo Facebook page, in the file section, you'll find the Wheel of Life document. Okay. And also, if you go to my YouTube channel, you'll find a video that I did. It's like seven or eight minutes long on how to fill this out, how to use the assessment tool. And what the wheel of life is, it's a circle, right? That represents your whole life. And it's divided into eight sections. And you're asked to assess how full or fulfilled you feel in each area. And those, those different sections represent your entire world, your entire life, right? So you might be a 10 in your business, but you might not be such a 10 in health and wellness or relationships. And so if you look at it like a wagon wheel, if it's not in balance, right? If it's not pretty even, it's a very bumpy ride. Right. So that's the analogy for you to think about. And again, if I can help in any way, reach out. The other thing I just want to touch on what you said in the, in the beginning, when you first came on about the agreements, you're looking at it um, from a perspective of trying to understand where the other person's coming from. Your opportunity is really how you uh, internalize this for yourself, right? So that's, a, that's, a that's why they're all four very different and standalone, uh, because we can't really control what the other person thinks or says, right? So thank you so much, Diana. Anything else this morning from anybody? All right, yeah. let's Yeah, Madeline, go ahead. Yeah, hi, hi. Um, yeah, I think these are awesome. I think I have read this book as well. And um, just to Diana, I totally hear what she's saying. And I think it's such a common thing in real estate for people to just try so hard to be so perfect in their business that it's easy to forget about yourself and your personal life. But I feel like when you come around to that, your business probably does so much better because you're actually are doing what Anna just talked about, the things that are more important to your life. But these four things just speak so much to real estate. And besides our own life, I mean, don't take anything personally. <laughs> don't make assumptions. It's so easy to do in our business with yeah. uh, what do they think their house is worth? And why didn't they hire me and hired somebody else? I mean, these are, uh, and always do your best, right? So this was, this was a great thing for me for the week. Um, but 
Diana, you really spoke to me with that because I think a lot of us get caught up in our business so much that we forget about our personal life. But when we get that back, I feel like your business goes just so much further, so much easier, you know, so. Well said, mm -hmm. well said, awesome. All right, listen, everyone, have a wonderful day. I would love for you to share this video with other people. So uh, I, I, I will be posting this on the Facebook group and it'll be on my YouTube channel. If you found this helpful, share it with someone, let them uh, take a listen. And if you find that this Mojo group is, changing your life or you find value in it, I would also love for you to share that with others and invite them to become a part of the tribe. So thanks again, as always. I love being able to start my week with you guys. I hope you get the book. Let me know uh, how you're doing with it. And I will see you guys next Monday. Have a great day. Thank you, Annie. Thanks, Bye.